Hi everyone, Fenris Models here, and today we're going to take a look at the A7A Corsair II from Hasegawa in 172nd scale. Now, this kit is another one of those kits that I just kind of picked up a little bit on a whim. Um, I know that everybody kind of knows me as the Corsair guy, and ha ha ha, right? It's a Corsair in technicality. <laughs> but honestly, I've kind of wanted to build one. Um, just because uh and i you know slowly but surely i'm i'm getting more into the uh jet engine aircraft and um th this one's just one that you know at some point i needed to add to my collection so i got this online uh i want to say for something like 20 25 dollars something like that um so it wasn't too terribly expensive um and as you you'll see it's not a super terribly hard kit um but yeah, how about we go ahead and open it up and take a look inside. And there we go. We have uh, three sprues, a uh, set of clear sprues. Uh, this guy right here just fell off the sprue. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Our decals and our instruction manual. So as normal, how about we go ahead and crack this one open and take a look at the pages inside. So the booklet does start off with some nice little information about the uh, uh, Corsair II. First, in, you know, Japanese, English, uh, German, and I think that's Spanish. Something. And then Chinese. So, And here we have a nice little comparison between it and the F4U version of the Corsair. Um, both being uh, Vought aircraft, and there's actually three additional um, Corsairs uh, that are all biplanes, so in total, uh, that's what, five Corsairs that Vought has made. Um, if I can track down kits of those others, you know, I'll make them, but for now, this is all we got. <laughs> so, then we have a nice little list of all of the different munitions that the aircraft carried and on which pylons they uh, would be on and in what numbers, so you can see here pylons one through eight and whether it's gonna have one two three four six um copies of whatever the munition is and then <clears throat> per aircraft norm we have uh starting with the cockpit and the fuselage halves looks like we need to put about two grams of weight if you're going to be displaying it um with the landing gear down to prevent it from sitting on its tail and then we have our wings going on. Um, it's kind of interesting that they have the painting for the pilot there when they do have you installing it, you know, immediately. But so be aware that there's your uh, painting scheme for that there. We have installing the gear bay doors and um, looks like there's some decals that will be going in there. So something else to be aware of. And our munitions and installation and as I said it's pretty fast because on the back side now we have our markings and our paint schemes so it primarily has two different schemes you have um, the one from VA 56 and one from VA 153 I think I'm probably gonna go with 153 just because um, that blue is very stark and just having a larger amount of it than what we have on this but Similarly, I don't know yet. We'll f we'll see what happens as the build goes on And then last but not least our um, Sprue map and then next up we have the decals Which they feel pretty good. They're classic Hasegawa, so they're um they're, they're a little bit thicker, but they're not um, Tamiya level thickness. Let's see if I can get the light to show. There we go. You can kind of see there. So yeah, kind they, they feel like what you would expect from Hasegawa. So we'll see how well it keeps up with that. But um, they're very sharp, very crisp. So overall, they look, look pretty good for decals. So then we're going to get into the parts. Um, we're going to start with this guy here who has fallen loose, the little nose, can nose cone, nose cap. And then our first sprue, we have our fuselage, one and a half. And it does look like this are, these are all um, 
raised panel lines. So those are all raised panel lines. So um, not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do yet with that. Um, we'll see what I choose to do. Um, I don't have a rescribing tool. Otherwise, I would rescribe them. But um, yeah, we'll see. There's a few options you can do with, with raised panel lines. But anyway, and then we got all of our munition. Well, maybe not all, but a good number of our munitions. And they seem to be one piece which is interesting usually they'll be like you know two pieces but these are just one whole solid um, piece so and then on to our second sprue which is the other half um, you can see we have a good bit of flash down there can't tell if that's actually flash or if that's like where the um as the injection pin and the parts pulled away some molten plastic kind of stuck to the um, to the mold it's kind of hard to tell we got definitely have some flash here on the back side so that's gonna take some cleaning up we got our external fuel tanks and pylons and then our third sprue which has our bay doors and landing gear and our wings which again mostly raised but it does look like some of its recessed so that's an interesting choice. We got some more flash there. And on the wheels. And you see it in there. Goodness, there's significantly more flash than I was expecting to have in here, but this is an older kit. Um I don't remember exactly how old it is but it's it's very clearly not as uh, crisp as it could be oh my goodness look at these pylons like those aren't even straight like that that I would think was excess plastic until I flipped it over like so we got some serious cleanup to do on these like this guy right here well oh. Anyway, and then finally our clear parts. And they look pretty good. Again, we, we do have some flash right there, but insofar as the main portion of the canopy goes, it's pretty clear. Um, the, uh, yeah, the um, panel line is, uh, or the frame line is on the outside. So we'll be able to use that for uh, masking things up. So that's good. Yeah. And there we go, Hasegawa's A7A Corsair 2 in 170 second scale. As I said, um, this one's a, it's a pretty quick kit. Um, in fact, I think that the most of the time working on the kit will, of any one stage, is actually probably going to be cleanup. Um, you saw how much flash there was, there was a number of um, ejection pin marks. Um, it's gonna it's gonna take some work to get this guy looking looking pretty clean but um, honestly it's not that surprising uh, again as I said I believe this is an older kit I can't remember if it's from the 80s but uh, I'll look it up and I'll, and I'll make sure to, to like post a thing up here um, but yeah um, it, it's gonna take a little work but it's not terrible it's not bad um, we'll see how well it does <laughs> I say all that um, but uh, no I, I am I am looking forward to this um, I do also want to go ahead and mention that the uh, dragon ladies coming along as I said uh, last week I wasn't able to get as much work done on, on it as I was hoping to we had Halloween this past week um, and uh, you know with having a little one we spent a lot of time doing a lot of holiday stuff with that so I didn't get as much time building but I'm, you know, by this time next week, we should have, uh, I should have that done and we'll have a video up on that. So stick around for that. Stick around to see this guy's build up. And um, yeah, in the meantime, stay safe and keep modeling. Thank you to my gift set tiered patron, Callie Bear, and to all of my starter set patrons. Your support means the world to me. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of my content, how about checking out one of these two videos here?